You are live. Hey, everybody. We're live. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV channel tonight, everybody. Looks like we got everything working <laughs> so far. It's a little early to tell. I, I can't really tell anything yet. This is like the first time I've been behind here and not at the camera. So I'm just... Uh, I can't really tell anything yet. This is like the first time I've been behind Okay. So anybody, does anybody have any questions? We have a couple that were asked uh, after we did the show last week, but does anybody have any questions for us tonight before we get started with our previous questions? <clears throat> And if you have a question, feel free to ask. Um, I answered a lot of questions this week, and I did promise to share that book. We promised to share that book. Um, and we're going to. And we're going to get, <laughs> let's get these two questions here okay. out of the way. Okay, all right. So we had a, we had a uh, uh, subscriber that's having a problem with uh, their solder. When they go to solder, it's spitting and sputtering. Well, the only, uh, you're just using too much solder or too much flux. The amount of flux, and it, if it's spitting and sputtering, it sounds like you're using a liquid flux rather than a paste flux. I recommend the ruby flux, and there's a lot of you out there that use it. And the reason I use ruby flux is just because it's much cleaner and easier to clean up. Also, if you're putting too much flux on your solder joints, it's going to spit and sputter, and if you're using a paste flux, it's going to smoke and really be nasty. So change your flux to ruby flux, and then don't use so much of it. You'll find you don't, you don't need a whole lot. You don't want to look down on your piece that you're working on and see a puddle of flux on either side of the, of the uh, copper foil. So just cut back on your flux, and you'll find it's much easier for you to solder. So then we had another subscriber who's having trouble with her foil cracking when she's uh, coming around an inside curve and folding it over. Well, you know what? There's really no secret to that because when you're on an inside curve, you're asking the foil to do something that it's not designed to do. But also, if you keep in mind that when you're doing an inside curve with your foil, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, sorry about that. When you're doing an inside curve with your foil, remember to keep it loose. The looser you keep the foil, the less cracks you're going to have as you go around that inside curve and come back out onto a straight edge. So just, you know, just loosen up the foil a little bit. Try, don't get it so tight because it doesn't have to be tight. It has to stick. So just kind of loosen it up a little bit, take your time as it, around it, and then once you crimp it, you may get a few little cracks, but you're not going to get a bunch of ease like this. So just take your time with it. Don't get frustrated. If you do, walk away, do something else, look at a cardinal outside, come back in and get back to work. I hope that helps uh, because, I mean, it, my if I'm doing an inside curve, if I try to pull that pull the foil too tight, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, I'll get those cracks as well. If you loosen it up a little bit, then you can get it around there and hopefully it'll, uh, you won't have those big wide cracks anyway. Small cracks, your solder will jump from one place to the other and nobody will know any, any of the different. Uh, we had a question about Ruby Flux, uh, available at the uh, online. Yeah, Ruby Flux is, uh, I, I, I order it from Amazon. It comes in, uh, I order, usually order two, uh, two quarts at a time. comes in a small bottle, it and it's, uh, it is available on Amazon, which is where I get it. I can put a link in the description. Yeah. You know, we don't, the I, I, only reason I tell you about the products I use, we don't get paid for them, but... We do get ten cents if they buy it on Amazon. Oh, okay. Well, hey, if you order Ruby Flux, we get ten cents, and you know what? Those ten cents all add up to make sense. So we appreciate it. But the Ruby Flux, it, it, I just find it so much easier whether it, whether you're using lead or copper foil. 
The Ruby Flux is cleaner. It doesn't smoke. And if you use it correctly, it doesn't spit and sputter, and it's so easy to clean up. So have fun with the Ruby Flux, everybody. Yeah, it's good. I had a, another student, or they may be a professional, either one, answer and say yeah. they will never go back to another Flux. They love the Ruby Flux. So, uh, hi, well, Lee. Hey. Hi, Lee. Uh, looking for an attorney. Uh, Dan is looking for an attorney alternative to glass polish because it's expensive in Canada. Can car wax be used? You better believe it. <laughs> Absolutely. Here we go again. <laughs> Turtle wax, non-abrasive car wax. Non-abrasive, not the polish that comes in the can. Just use the liquid car wax. And actually, to me, that's probably what's in the bottle. I don't know for sure. That's probably what's in the bottle of the glass polish. But if you... If you just put this liquid car wax on, put it on, wax on, wax off, you'll find it's a lot easier and it's definitely a lot less expensive. You know, because we're all looking for ways just to trim around the edges a little bit so that we can make a little bit more money at what we're doing or just be able to enjoy it without having to spend a bunch of money. So right. yes, the answer to your question is, you better believe you can use car wax and I hope that'll help you. Yeah, and you can experiment with, you know, different waxes. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we always use turtle wax. Yeah, we always you know, have. A little, little green bottle about that tall. It, again, turtle wax polish sounds good, <laughs> and it works great, and your copper foil will never, ever oxidize. <laughs> it's, it's really good stuff. So yeah, thanks. thanks for the question, you know, because uh, we, if we can answer them for you, you know we will. Okay, uh, another question about pricing your work, and this person wants to know, um, they normally go by square footage, and that's pretty um, standard in the industry, um, but your square footage price, that's another thing. That's something that you're going to have to set for yourself. We can't tell you what to charge, but... Right, you know, we have, we have friends all over the country, and just like us, who do this for a living. And the square footage price varies. Um, and I think a lot of it varies. Uh, a lot of people charge by the design. And, and sometimes you can't, you know, you can't charge somebody $400 a square foot for a cabinet door that has 12 pieces of glass in it. And it's just window glass and they just want a little grid pattern. So, you know, you kind of have to use your own sensibility about it. And, but we do have something really interesting for you. And this is a book and this that Barbara and I have been through, and we've also taken the classes. And it's, it's actually a, um, it's something that was provided to us by the South Carolina Arts Commission. And our dear friend Andrew, who lives in Philadelphia, uh, teaches this class and travels around and teaches artists. So I'm going to show you this book, but first, write this down. I want you to go to artist, A-R-T-I-S-T, Dash U, artist U. I don't know about it. Is there a da is this no dash? It's just artistu.org. All right, so artistu.org. <laughs> you could probably get there with a dash too, but anyway. No. This book, <laughs> if you go to artistu.org and download this book, and then they also have a work, sh a work manual, correct? Right. It's a this work is, manual. This is a copy of the workbook. And then they'll have the book, and these two things go together. This is absolutely free. And it's a must for your business and for you who want to be an artist and you want to be paid for your work and you want to be able to be creative. This tells you how to price your work. Mm -hmm. This tells you how to do a bio. A bio. This tells you how to do a lot of different things that some of you may have missed in the beginning when you started doing what you're doing. So this is wonderful. This this applies to every artist that whether you're a whether you're a ballet dancer, you're an artist. Whether you're a painter, you're an artist. Stained glass, you're an artist. A glass blower. You know, 
we all have to learn, and, and Barbara and I have learned so much from these two books. So the great thing about this book is you can get your friends together, your other artist friends, and they don't have to be stained glass artists. Each individual artist of a different medium could get together and work through this workbook together, a group of maybe three or four of you. And it teaches you how to plan your life so that you won't be a starving artist, right. so that you can succeed and plan your life so all those and this things book, will happen for you. <laughs> this book was written by a starving artist. Once, once a once starving artist who is now within a very lucrative industry that he loves dearly. And he's made it accessible to everybody online if you just download the book. It's free. It's free. And so you'll get a lot of, you'll, this will be a start. So if you promise that you will start and read the first two chapters of the book by next week, I'll tell you a few tips about planning and pricing and that type of thing. Yeah, because I'm... You, because you really need this under your belt first. Yeah, you need this under your belt, but you also have to keep in mind that whether you're a hobbyist, you know, just doing it for fun or making gifts for all your friends, this needs to be treated like a business. This book right here, Making Your Life as an Artist, will teach you exactly how to do that. So great, great. And I'm putting the title here. Okay, well, Carl, thanks. Uh, I mean, she's they're nice. downloading it right now. <laughs> uh, you'll love it, I'm telling you. It's And, the, and if you ever get to take his seminars, uh, it's usually a weekend seminar. He is so inspiring and and his seminars I, I are all over the say, country. I, I can't say enough. Well, I know he's in South Carolina, Philadelphia, you know. In, Baltimore, yeah, uh, those, Richmond. So, so it, it may be just on the right coast rather than the left coast. But you, his name is Andrew Simonette, and he's a very interesting fellow and uh, was once a starving artist, and now he's he's got it going on. So uh, we've known Andrew, I guess, for about eight years, nine yeah. years, something like that. So um, South Carolina Arts Association has these free seminars, uh, and Andrew comes to, comes to South Carolina a couple times a year. So everything's on his website. You'll find out all about him. He's awesome. And you'll find out where he's, where he's going to be next, because yeah. it's a weekend workshop. Usually the Arts Commission for that particular state or whatever pays for it. And all you have to do is get a hotel and, and enjoy 20 hours of just learning everything. You'll be so amazed. You, you'll be like, click, what happened? <laughs> so as promised last week, the big book, y'all. The big book, y'all. <laughs> this is it. So This me, is your nightly reading for the next uh, 10 years. <laughs> yeah, so I, I will tell you this, though. Barbara did this book now is broken up into individual um, chapters. chapters and that you can purchase the chapter only. So let's say, for instance, chapter 13. You know what chapter 13 is? It's all about painting on glass. And then we have chapter... Well, uh, chapter 21 is about lighting. How to, how to illuminate your stained glass for your customers. So those, okay, this book is usually, it went down in price. It's only, it went down to $792 on Amazon. It's the only place I could find it. Um, but now they're selling chapters. So for $25, you can buy a chapter and you can do chapter by chapter because you probably won't use everything that's in this book. But if you use, uh, if you need information on glazing or copper foiling, you can go, you can buy that chapter. It's $25. If you want to know about structure and reinforcement, you can buy that chapter, $25. Same way with the painting and the lighting. Those are the only four chapters I know that you can buy. But what a great book this yeah, is. Yeah, and this I mean, is awesome. or, or if you just feel, I'm sorry, Barb, <laughs> or if you just feel the need to have something really nice <laughs> beside your bed at night so that you can read, this book is, we've had this book, we've had this book for almost 30 years, haven't we? Yeah. 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 So, and you can see. Stained Glass Association. Yeah, when we were really big into the Stained Glass Association of America 
uh, when we first got started because we had to we had to learn. I mean, I I had the fabrication techniques down and and knew how to build stained glass windows, but I didn't know anything else about it. So it is the stained glass Bible. That is absolutely correct. Yeah, it is. The, it, it's Carl. got everything. It's got even things in there you didn't want to know. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's in detail, and but, you know, you never know when you're going to need a. And you know the guys text by, uh, advice. over at uh, that are restoring the the rose window in the in the in Notre Dame in Notre Dame right now. You know what? They're probably they probably they're, one of the ones that wrote the book. Yeah, they're probably part <laughs> of the writers of this book here. But it's absolutely it's a must for your stained glass studio. And now, see, thirty years ago, they didn't sell just the chapters. They wanted to sell the book. However, we purchased the book for less than two hundred dollars thirty years ago yeah. too, though. So yeah, so maybe you'll find one at a yard sale or something. I don't know. People don't know the value of things like that sometimes. Oh, you're welcome for us sharing the book with you. Are you kidding? We love it, and uh, that's, we guard that thing with our uh, a lot of pride, a lot of pride. So finally uh, got us live. Okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Thank you all for. Uh, do, does anyone have any any new questions? Yeah. Did you have any news you wanted to share? Well, I, I do have I do have one thing, and you know this week, this tonight we don't have an update for the live oak pattern. We've been working on it, but we yeah, so we, we had something else that happened that we had to and film. so so yeah, um, we get a call from from Brook Green Gardens, and we uh, they invited us down. We told them we'd come down and and do an interview with Brook Green Gardens and we have they have a, a summer light art by night festival coming up and it is June the 9th which is Wednesday all the way through August 21st so after our video and <laughs> you know what I'm gonna tell you thank you for watching the video after last week's video because you know that's that's exactly what we need you to do and tonight I'm asking you to watch the video about the art, the Summer Light Art oh. by Night project at Brook Green Gardens. It's five minutes and nine seconds. And it starts at 7.45. And I would like five minutes and nine seconds of your time tonight <laughs> to look at this and look at this video. And also just kind of, it'll relax you, I think. The well, video is awesome. Is a, I don't know. I, the thing is, they don't know that we blow glass as well. I don't think they know that about us. They, well, you probably don't. Well, now you do. Now you do. And so <laughs> We've we been blowing a, glass for 25 years. We have an exhibition at Brook Green Gardens, and um, it's part of their summer night, summer light, art by night exhibition. And their permanent and, collection. And their permanent collection. And so please watch the video. It They have done a phenomenal job putting this installation together and we are so honored to be a part of it. Um, we love working with them and um, they are a great organization and this year they are celebrating 90 years. Can you imagine? It's, it's a sculpture garden. It's a beautiful place to visit. It's right outside of Myrtle Beach. You, it's you never know it was near Myrtle Beach. I mean, it's totally different right, than, right. than Myrtle Beach. But if you can make a visit, but yeah. watch the video, you will you yeah, will learn take some five more about and nine us. Five seconds out of your life, <laughs> and do that for us because it's awesome. Yeah. And I want to thank everybody too for for passing around the the razor blade trick because uh, that thing went crazy this week, and uh, Barb did a wonderful job with that. I have a question, another Please. question, and somehow I missed it. Things started going too fast. Let's see. Um, now I lost it again. Hang on a second. Uh, from Miguel. Uh, an issue with copper foil. When I bar burnish my piece with the foil, then it appears some of the black sticky part comes off. Is that my fo means my foil is bad? Uh, that's exactly probably what it means. Your uh, your foil has gotten hot, and the the I don't know if you're using black back or just regular copper back, but 
uh, your foil has gotten hot so that now the glue is running and as you're burnishing it, it's coming out from underneath of it. So I, I don't know, and, and again, I use only Venture foil tape and I use only 730 seconds. I keep it out of the sun and I keep it in a Ziploc baggie so that it doesn't oxidize. So I'm not sure, but most of the time your foil, if you, if you really look at it, because your copper foil is on a long tube and they cut it. And a lot of times if your foil gets bad, that glue will be, actually you'll be able to see it when you turn, when you look at the side of the roll of foil, you'll be able to see the glue there. So yeah, and if you need to clean it up, the best thing to do is, is to solder it and then clean it up after that. Because, But it is a, I, if I were you, Miguel, I think I would just probably toss that roll of foil. And I know they're 11 or $14, but something's happened that really shouldn't be happening to that well, foil. Well, and two, take some off of the foil and get down into further into the foil because it just could be that it got hot and maybe the rest of the foil is okay. Yeah, peel and off then, maybe five or six foot of it and yeah, then start again and try Start that. again on some scrap glass and also clean your glass really good. Um, you know, sometimes you have to clean it with, I mean, it depends on what is on it, but if you got cutter oil on it, the copper foil is never going to stick to it. So you're going to have to break that cutter. I mean, if you're using a lot of cutter oil and it's getting all over your glass, you're going to have to really clean that glass to get that off of there. Yeah. Or your foil's never going to stick. And that's kind of a little bit of a misconception. Is you know you can you really should you should use when your cutter's brand new, you should use cutter oil for maybe the first two or three miles. After that, your wheels dialed in, the wick is wet. And you really don't need a bunch of cutter oil messing everything up. You have to wash the glass anyway, but cutter oil is like a pain in the neck to get off. So use your, if you're getting a brand new cutter, put some oil in it until you get everything. Just a little tiny bit of yeah. oil. Don't fill up the reservoir. Oh, no. And if you've got a, a pistol grip cutter, definitely don't fill up that reservoir. That's a half a gallon. <laughs> That's a half a they, gallon. Those reservoirs aren't, they're kind of misleading. They're yeah. not meant to be full of oil. Yeah, they. it's just part of, it's part of the design, but a, a small eyedropper, one eyedropper in your brand new glass cutter. When that's gone, you're done with, with uh, cutter oil, I feel. Okay, and Lee said she heard that if you put dry packs, you know the dry packs that you get uh, from in a bottle of pills? Yeah, put the that desiccant. in uh -huh. the desiccant. Uh, put that in there, and it helps keep your foil good. That's a that's an excellent tip. Anytime you can put anything, Thank you, Lee. anything in a baggie and drop a desiccant pellet in there, yeah, you're gonna. That's better than rice. Better if you. Let's. I would say even if you drop your phone in in water, I'd put a desiccant pack in with your phone instead of dropping it in rice because <laughs> it's definitely gonna uh, absorb it. So yeah, Lee, that's a that's a good good way to do it and a great way to uh, keep everything from oxidizing. Because you know your boxes of lead uh, that, we, that we purchase, our boxes of lead come also with desiccant inside of them to keep those from oxidizing as well. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so hey everybody, you know, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. I, got, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see it over my head, but we've installed our 1940 golf <laughs> gas station bell and hold your ears <laughs> and i hooked it up well i didn't hook it up my son hooked it up to a foot pedal on a guitar so it doesn't run by air bing bing it runs <laughs> off electric fill her up boss <laughs> so here we go we got our bell back so don't forget i know a lot of y'all are subscribers but don't forget to ring that bell and give us a thumbs up. We enjoy doing these live Q and A's. We enjoy meeting our subscribers and we'll try to help you in any way that we can. So we have an update coming up on the Live Oak Project later on this week. Yep. And at 7.45 tonight, we have an interview with 
John McGann down at Brook Green Gardens. It's just a little five-minute show, but five you get minutes. to see the gardens, and you'll see our work in the daytime, and then I have a few shots of it at night. And, uh, yeah, great group, great. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we've been working on besides the, the Live, Oak Live Oak Project. And uh, so and the, a lot of things yeah, going so, on. We have project. another big project coming up, and you guys will be the first You guys the will first be the first to know, to know about it, so. <laughs> Uh, we did. We did manage to get uh, one of the twelve sections of the Live Oak project put together this week and puttied, and it's in the window now. We'll get it clean before we video it. We're mo we've moved the second panel over to the t construction table, fabrication table, and we'll be putting another one together. We hope to have those four panels together uh, by the end of uh, the week, first part of next week. And then we'll start on the big arch at the top, and those those windows will take a little bit longer because they are a little bit larger. So we're looking forward to it. See, I hope that we did. Didn't. I miss anyone's questions? Did That's I what miss I was anyone's? getting ready to say. Because <laughs> it was going kind of quick there. Okay, Kathleen, anything. thanks. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Is our, our shop open this summer? No, our shop is not open. It's a private studio as of now. Uh, we have a lot of work that we do. We make appointments, you know, by appointment. Um, but the, the, we don't sell supplies or anything, so uh, most of our sales are online. And um, But if you're in town and you'd like to come see our shop, set it up beforehand and we'll make it happen. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can, you know, we can make it happen. For you guys. Yeah, for you Don't guys. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, you know, if you've ever been to our store before, you'll know that our gallery is less than 100 square feet. Yeah, and our building is big, but our gallery is but small. But we have a lot, and we have a lot of workspace. You know, our stained glass is in the front section of the building. And y'all haven't even seen this yet. Our glass blowing studio is in the back. So we actually make glass too, so yeah, it's a whole different. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do a lot of different things and you'll see the kind of things that we, uh, that we do with our blown glass. Uh, the rondelles, the big rondelles. Yeah. That, yeah, we do those in different colors and things. So. Yeah, so we'll show you that later. Yeah, when we, uh, because you know, as most of you know, we live in South Carolina and right now, the humidity outside is 142 yeah, percent. It's hot. And because by the time we walk from our front door at the studio to the car, which is at the bottom of the parking lot, parked next to Artie, we're sweating already. That's yep. terrible, 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 yep. terrible. So yeah, guys, um, I hope the stained glass Bible helped you out. You can look at that, but you can again. You can purchase. The chapters only, which is awesome. Yeah. And because especially I'm, if you yeah, yeah. seven hundred and eighty two dollars a lot of money worth. Yeah. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able you to. You gotta afford build a it. lot of stained glass windows to make that much profit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So save your pennies. Save your pennies. <laughs> but keep in mind when you're figure trying to figure out what to charge or, or what have you, uh, treat it like a business. There's a there's a formula. That formula is your overhead your salaries, your materials, and then a profit. Those first three things will eat you alive if you're not careful. It won't leave anything for the fourth. So watch your pennies, and we'll try to help you all that we can. We haven't been in business for almost 37 years mm -hmm. because we don't know what we're doing. We learned along the way, so we got all the mistakes behind us. There were we a lot of We can tell bumps. you what not to do. <laughs> yeah, we can tell you what not to do, that's for sure. Okay, so we're going to have to end the broadcast because we have another, the the, uh, the video. summer lights is coming on yeah. in about... Um, 12 minutes. No, oh, no. 15, 17 minutes. No, 15 minutes. So we have any more questions? I don't see any questions. Where... Do you find the BGG video? Oh, it's uh, coming up on RDRV channel. It's coming up. Uh, should You should be able to get it as... Go to our channel. It's premiering. Yeah, it's premiering right below where we oh, are. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll see if I can... Let me see if I can get the link for you guys. Or you can go to...
RDRV, you should see the it's premiere. It's a premiere at 7.45. Can you see it? Can you see it on yours? Can I see it? Yeah, if you want uh, yeah. to. Hang on. I probably can. Um, I'm afraid if I go out of this yeah, we don't that I might get out lose of you it. guys. Uh, we don't want to get out of it yet. Here, I might be able to do it like this. Lee, thanks for those good questions tonight. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you, guys. That's, uh, you know, we're helping each other. So if anyone has answers to these questions that we didn't answer. Southeast Texas, huh, Lee? Yeah, you know what the humidity is all about, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> and, you know, it's a good thing that we're getting ready to quit because we're losing light. You know, we're getting our light from a window, and now it's starting to, you're getting darker and darker I mean, by the minute. It's not a, believe me, I don't have a tan. I work inside most of the time, so. Okay. But, hey, see. if y'all... Uh, you know, do take the time and you'll find out just a little bit more about Barb and Ed when you watch the Brook Green Garden uh, video. And it's just one of those things that we want to be able to bring you because there's so much out there. And if we can bring you just a little bit more to make your day happy, that's what we're here for. And West Palm Beach. Holy wow. cow. Yeah, we have relatives down in Port St. Lucie. You are uh, West Palm Beach, your home of the Yellow Cardinal, the fame, infamous Yellow Cardinal. Oop, 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 oop. I didn't mean to put that on. I'm trying to find the link here, and uh, it's not. I, I can't even get the link. I don't know how other people are supposed to get it. Let's see. I can just say go to the channel. I'll put the link um, right here as soon as I close out the broadcast, I'll copy and paste the link right here. Kathleen, you too. You have a great night, hon. Just a little smile and a wave for you. And thank you for everything you've done in the past. And we hope that you enjoy the summer light art by night at Brook Green Gardens this summer season. Wow. People from all over. Hey, y'all yeah. have a nice evening. And uh, I'll put that link in the in, right here in the comments so that you guys can link to it but you should be able to get it uh, if you're subscribed remember to ring the bell you can subscribe and then there's a little bell ring that bell because and if you ring it then every time we have a live and every time we put out a video because sometimes we'll put out videos that aren't we don't tell you about them we just put them out there so you'll get a little notice hey we just put a video out you might not see it immediately but it will come through your feed, feed yeah sure yeah well, we're trying to we try to put everything that we put up we'll try not to let you miss it so tap on that bell there so that your bell will ring when we're ready thanks okay. again guys thank you see you next have week have a good night <laughs> okay goodbye <laughs>